Well, hi there. I'm here today with Nagini, who is an Aki monitor. One of, well, if you've seen our video before, obviously one of the greatest pet lizards you could ever own. And the Aki monitor has been a dream lizard for me for a long time. I should probably tell you a little bit about Nagini right up front, because any of you who know anything about Harry Potter know that that is the name, I guess, of a giant snake. I didn't name this lizard but it seems like the name of a giant snake is perfect for a tiny lizard. We give the Aki Monitor an overall score of 3.6 out of 5. And I just told you not very long ago that this is a dream lizard, one of the greatest pet lizards you could ever have, but it doesn't get a perfect score of 5 out of 5. And that's going to come down to our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. So let's get started. Let's talk about handleability. We give Aki monitors a score of 4 out of 5 for handleability. And this is really just going to come down to the fact that they're small and they can potentially bite. That's the only reason they don't get a 5 out of a 5. Being small can be a little bit of an issue for some lizards just because they could potentially get hurt with rough handling. This is an adult male red Aki monitor. They're actually two different types of Aki monitors that you'll see available, red Aki's and yellow Aki's. The, the pattern and coloration is a little bit different between red Aki's and yellow Aki's, and there are debatable differences between them, like if they're different subspecies or not. But generally speaking, they're very, very similar, very similar in size. The red Aki, you can see, and the yellow Aki, both of them, are very, very moderately sized, especially for monitor lizards. Monitor lizards, are super duper rad. They're awesome, smart, active, exciting lizards. And these guys are a very modestly sized monitor, which is really nice because handling monitor lizards, generally speaking, with their sharp claws that they use for digging and climbing, they're gonna wind up tearing you up. They're gonna cut up your, your hands, your arms, even if they're not being aggressive. An Aki monitor is small enough that even though you can feel those little claws, they're not gonna hurt you. They're not gonna cut into your skin in any significant way. Also, some monitor lizards can get stressed with handling, but the Aki monitor is just great with handling. A lot of times when they're warm, you can get them out of their enclosure and they're very, very inquisitive, very active, very fun to interact with. They'll climb up on your shoulder. They like to get up high, so they'll climb up on your head. And, and you know, you can, you can literally play with them. They will play back. They're just very smart, very active, very fun lizards. Being a monitor lizard, they don't drop the tail. You know I hate it when lizards can drop their tails and monitor lizards don't and I love that about them. And the Aki monitor has got a stinking rad tail too. You can see it's somewhat prehensile. He's actually using it to hold on to me right now. And it's covered in little spikes. In fact, sometimes you'll hear these called spiny-tailed monitors. And that tail is actually used as a defensive mechanism. If they jam themselves into a rock all that a predator will be able to grab onto is that kind of spiny tail. So a little bit, again, like the Gigi skink, they can defend themselves using that rad spiky tail. As far as handling goes also, these guys don't stress out. Some, some monitors are very, very shy. Aki monitors are not. And as you can tell from looking at Nagini here, they just do great with handling. I love them. That is one of their best features. Now they can bite. They're capable of it. Uh, I know that my, my friend who actually owns Nagini here has been bitten by him in the past. I've never been bitten by an Aki monitor. It's really just going to probably depend on their feeding response more than being defensive. Aki monitors do love food and so you've got to make sure when they first approach you that they're coming for interaction and they're not coming for a meal and that they know that this is about interaction and not a meal because they love eating food, but we'll talk about that more here in a moment. We give the Aki Monitor a score of 4 out of 5 for care. Really, the hardest thing about them will just be keeping them fed. Monitor lizards eat a lot because they're active and intelligent predators, and that means that you need to get a lot of feeder insects and other feeders because they're going to need to eat maybe daily, and so you've always got to have those on hand, and that is a little bit more of a hassle than a lot of reptiles. Honestly, a little bit more like keeping a mammal 
that needs to eat on a very regular basis where some reptiles only need to eat a few times a week, maybe only once a week, depending on the species. When it comes to feeding Aki monitors, I've already mentioned that they need a diversity of feeders, and that can be kind of a pain, but at the same time, it means whatever is available to you at any given time, they're probably going to enjoy eating it. And feeding Aki monitors is one of the most fun things about having an Aki monitor because they're like little velociraptors. They just run all over the place and they're grabbing insects and they're shaking them and they're swallowing them down. They are just as exciting to watch eat as Komodo dragons, but a heck of a lot more reasonable to keep as a pet than a Komodo dragon. And the reason that they're so similar to Komodo dragons is because they basically are Komodo dragons. Monitor lizards are, in my opinion, one of the coolest animals on the planet, and Komodo dragons are one of the largest, and these are one of the smallest, though there are many monitor lizards that are even smaller than this. I think this is just the right size for handling, though, and so this, in my opinion, is the ultimate monitor lizard for a lot of people. They also need a big enclosure for a lizard this small. Not a colossal enclosure, but it is big, and it needs a lot of heat and UVB lighting, which is kind of a pain. They're also going to need some space to dig. Generally speaking, the enclosure is fairly simple. You need water available, places to hide, deep substrate, a good lid, and you're good to go. And of course, the lamps for heat and for UVB. When it comes to hardiness, we give the Aki monitor a score of 5 out of 5. Because as lizards go, this is really as good as it's going to get. As long as you are providing them with the necessities of life, with the proper basking temperatures, which are hot. They're going to be up around what we were talking about with a Gigi skink. Uh, so that is, that is a very hot basking spot, and they're going to need UV lighting, and they're going to need access to water. And if they have all these things, they're probably just going to thrive for you, and that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. I want to tell you a couple of cool things about monitor lizards. Why not? So one of them is, you'll notice they stick out a forked tongue like a snake. And that is used for the same reasons that a snake sticks its forked tongue out, so that it can detect prey and other things in its environment, and it can detect what direction it can be found in. That is really cool. And something that I really like about monitor lizards is you can see when they're, when they're breathing, they'll push with their throat. Uh, and that's called buccal pump, or positive pump respiration, and they're forcing air using their throat muscles, they're forcing air down into their lungs. And the reason that they would do that, like a toad does, is because lizards, when they run, they use the same muscles to run that they use to breathe. Which means that most lizards can either run or breathe, but they can't do both at the same time. And I don't know if any of you guys have ever tried to play tag while holding your breath, but it's a short game. And so for most lizards, they can run for a little while, and then they gotta stop and just go, ah, 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 ah. Alright, I can run again, and then they run, and then they gotta stop and breathe. But monitor lizards are not like that, because while they're running, they can continue to push air down into their lungs, and they continue to breathe, and they can run down those other lizards. And while that other lizard stops to get a breath, the monitor lizard can chomp on it. Which is great if you're a monitor lizard, but kind of lousy if you're not. When it comes to availability, we give the Aki monitor a score of 2 out of 5. This is really the worst thing about Aki monitors, is just that it can be fairly challenging to find one. And that is simply because they're monitor lizards, which means they're somewhat difficult to breed. I, I actually know a lot of people that are having great success breeding Aki monitors. But they're also having great success selling Aki monitors, because Aki monitors are amazing and that means that it's sort of difficult to find one. You'll probably need to get on a wait list, though if you're willing to look around and if you can look online, you'll probably find them. I, I find you generally don't see them at expos. People I know that breed Aki monitors and sell Aki monitors usually sell all the Aki monitors they were going to bring to the expo on their way to the expo. That just reflects what an incredible pet lizard this is. You can find one, it's just going to take some work. When it comes to upfront costs, this is going to reflect a little bit their lack of availability and the high demand for them. They're expensive. They're an expensive animal to buy up front. Everything else, for a monitor lizard especially, is very, very affordable. But that lizard itself is going to be expensive. And then, of course, the enclosure is large, so it's more expensive than for some animals. It's, it's still a small monitor lizard enclosure, but it's a big lizard enclosure. They're going to need that UVB lighting, which is always more expensive. 
uh, they're going to need hot basking lights and then lots of access to feeders. And, and we've got links to all of these things down in the description box to help you at least know what would be a good choice for them. So once again, we give the incredible Aki Monitor a score of 3.6 out of 5. That sounds low, because the Aki Monitor, frankly, isn't for everyone, but I just love them. They are a Komodo dragon in a pocket-sized package. Absolutely one of the best pet lizards. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. <laughs> see? That's what we've been missing. Well, hi there. That's probably too scary. And you can see we've got links to most of these things down in the, whatever that thing is called. Description box. Down in the description. Blink. Blink. I'm supposed to tell people that I blink. You do blink. I do blink. We just cut those out because it makes me seem mortal. My Aki tried to bite my finger. Yep. <laughs> I remember you. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.